I bought the new MetaQuest 3, one of the most highly anticipated VR headsets to release this year. And in this video, we're going to unbox it, share my first impressions, see if it's worth purchasing, and also compare the major differences against the Quest 2. Now, I'm super excited to check out the brand new MetaQuest 3. Probably throughout this video, I'm, I'm going to call it the o uh, Oculus Quest 3 because they, they've changed the name <laughs> since the last one that came out. But this has got some major improvements over the Quest 2. Now this is available in two different variations. Right here I've got the 128 gigabyte model which costs around $499. But if you want the 512 gigabyte model, that's around $649, which is quite expensive. And, and you know, you gotta be quite a diehard, it's all falling out the box. You gotta be quite like a diehard VR user if you wanted to go for that much internal storage and also spend that much on one of these headsets. At the time of filming this video, you can pick up a Quest 2, which is still a fantastic VR headset for around $250, maybe $300. It depends on what version you choose, which is a, a significantly cheaper than this one. But there are some massive changes that will make you want to consider this one that, that you probably don't want to overlook. <laughs> this is the headset right here. Man, this thing is, Small. That's what she said. Yeah. The, the old Quest 2 used to elongate out massively. It would obtrude all the way out of here, which just meant the weight distribution wasn't ideal. But this is insanely compact. Now, something crazy that you wouldn't expect, considering this headset is so much smaller, it is actually heavier, this headset, than the Quest 2. And that is because of the, the new design with with some of the lenses. Now these lenses are really interesting. So these new pancake style lenses take up a significant less amount of space, which is great because it makes the headset look super sexy, but they have some major improvements as well in terms of the clarity of image. So when you look on something like the uh, Meta Quest, Meta Quest, not Oculus Quest, the Meta Quest 2 and also the PSVR 2, another fantastic VR headset that released this year. Those are a different style of lenses and you can actually see the concentric rings within the lenses with how they've been made up. So like that means when you put them on, you, you see that sort of screen door effect and stuff is a little bit distorted with them sort of circles that occupy the lens and obviously the, the width and depth of these. Whereas with these pancake lenses, they're completely clear, which improves also the, uh, the field of view also as well, like the, the sort of eye to eye ends, the, how clear it is. Now, of course, the lenses are a major talking point. I'm not going to bore you about them too much because it's one of those things where you have to see it to believe it rather than like bore your stuff with specs of lenses. But something that is super interesting that you'll want to know about is the improved performance of the Quest 3. So with the new displays, there's a 30% increase in overall resolution, and these new displays are 90 hertz or 120 hertz, depending on how you wanna run it. And you have those options obviously within the, the MetaQuest app on your PC. So that is pretty huge in overall clarity and resolution with that 30%. But let's talk about the chip that's inside of this thing. We've got an XR2 Gen 2 Snapdragon, which is nuts. It's one of the first VR headsets to be utilizing this new uh, chip technology. And this chip is also combined with eight gigabytes of RAM and claims to give you a 2.5 times increase in performance over the Quest 2, and the Quest 2 wasn't bad. So you can expect way better graphics from this thing and from some of the gameplay that I've seen from some of my other YouTuber friends, like Mike from the Oasis, he got this headset early. Uh, the, the, the footage looks incredibly different because some of the old games from the Quest 2 have had some performance increase patches. So they've got uh, higher resolutions and much better textures and overall graphics when you're playing within the Quest headset. So I'm really excited to try this out. A few moments later. Right, so it's next day and I've got my contact lenses in and had a chance to charge up the headset. It takes about an hour to charge it up. I'm now gonna go through the entire setup process. Now, so far it's been super duper easy. Like there's this really cool feature where basically you log into the, the Meta Quest app on your phone and you just like scan a QR code and it'll connect this to the internet. So it's very easy, you're not messing about typing in a super long Wi-Fi password that you can't remember. Massive improvement from the Quest 2. That was one of my biggest complaints with the Quest 2. With trying to connect it to the internet, you would like have to take the headset off and be like, okay, yeah, A, B, C, one, two, uh, put it back on. Okay, right, uh, GQ, wh whatever, you know, whatever your code was, it was ridiculously inconvenient. So this is a, a pretty awesome feature about the, the, well, all of the Quest headsets is, like if you've got some friends in your, your house, they can see what you're doing inside of the headset and like basically preview it, it can stream over the phone and it's, there's no lag at all in the experience. So they can see what you're doing inside of the game, which just makes it much more fun if you've got this like as a family Christmas present or something like that. Pretty, pretty decent. Now also inside of the headset, you'll see how we've got these green little battery status. Well, actually on the controller in real life, they, they're not there. On the actual controller in real life, it's just black. It's actually like a special feature overlay inside of the headset. So that lets you monitor the battery life of your controllers. Now it does automatically scan the area, like 
see how it's creating a thing. It's not the best that I would prefer to just choose my own boundary. That way you're going to get a little bit more maximization, if that's the word, out of the space that you can play in and we'll just draw it. So it's literally like a spray can. You take the controller and you just spray paint it in with the right trigger. I know the perfect place where we could take this. I've actually got a better idea. Let's take the camera outside into the warehouse. Th this is gonna be sick, guys. We've actually never shown you guys this. So this studio actually has three different offices that we film out of for both of all, all of the different channels that I have, gaming, music, uh, media, etc. But also out here, we have a full on warehouse that we're gonna, we're gonna set the quest up in here. This is going to be class. We've got all the space in the world. Like, look at this, it's massive. So we'll create a huge room here. We're in the process of actually renovating this. It's gonna look class. G give us a six months, eight months, and it'll be unrecognizable. Supercars, everything. Right, okay, so this game is First Encounters, which is basically like a demo game to show you what the mixed reality can do. So we can go ahead and scan our area. So this will do the automated scan. Basically, you like walk around and it'll look for walls. So right here, it's detected a wall. We're in the warehouse, so we don't really have the walls really close to each other because we've got loads of stuff in the way at the moment. But that, that, that should sort of do. I'm not going to be running around like a, a, a kid hyped up on some prime. So I um, don't think we're going to crash into anything. Then what should happen is objects should start to appear within the environment. So it's going to utilize that pass-through camera that's full color. It's going to utilize that, uh, which is good enough quality, like my brain can see perfectly fine. And then it's going to add other elements, uh, I don't know what those elements are, that should appear. Oh, okay, <laughs> wow, that was sick. So the roof, my real life roof on my warehouse is now having holes come through it and objects appearing directly in front of me, which is absolutely sick. Wow, okay, wow, that feels like it's right there, like it's gonna hit me. So all this, obviously on that camera, there's nothing here, but this is what I'm seeing right here is this little rocket that looks insane. Oh, that's crazy. Right here, we've got the wall, just the garage door, and then outside, there's, there's like a Mars thing. Something's about to happen. There's some music kicking off. Oh, that's crazy. We can shoot through the wall. So my garage door is now revealing this outside world when there's nothing there, but like in the headset. That's unreal. So same as well in the roof. That's crazy. So we can shoot through to the studios, and then it reveals this crazy Mars-style world. Like you can't get really close to it as well. That, that's definitely got improved tracking because the old Quest used to freak out when you would get close to things. It would be like, whoop, 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 and you had to like back off. Having this little object in front of me here sort of shows the potential of what like a chess style game, like a board game or, or a tabletop game could have in this mixed reality where you would have it on your kitchen table or whatever and you can pick and grab stuff, like that would be amazing. Not gonna lie guys, I've been super impressed by the new Oculus Quest 3. Had so much fun trying it out today and I can't wait to use it as my main VR headset over the next few months, try it out on like Microsoft Flight Simulator and a few other videos that I've got planned. I've gotta just quickly wrap this video up before I shoot off to the gym and I'm just gonna share my final thoughts on the headset on the way. <sighs> Listen to this bad boy. Ooh, nice. The biggest improvement has to be that new pass-through camera that's full color. This makes the headset much easier to use. You can like literally use your phone. You can read text messages, notifications on your phone while operating the headset. Also means that mixed reality stuff is insane because it actually is in the same color as it is in the game. Whereas if you try and do that on like the Quest 2, it's going to be not as impressive. But also the fidelity of the screens is very noticeable. I noticed this when reading text, it's just so much easier. This combined with the new lenses as well, definitely just contributed to an overall experience that just, you almost forgot the headset was on that was the first time in a vr experience i've ever forgot i've had the headset on this the head strap was okay i feel like you might need to upgrade to like the pro head strap like those additional accessories if you're going to play for like over an hour or two but for like quick 15 20 minute sessions was perfectly fine the adjustability was very similar to the quest 2's head, uh, headset strap the main thing that i feel like for me that it's currently missing however is it's definitely the the amount of games that are optimized for the Quest 3. At this moment in time, it's just mostly Quest 2 games. There's not many launch titles. So the Quest 2 games have been like updated with improved graphics, which is great. But then anything beyond that point is sort of like, there's nothing there. There's hardly any new launch games for you to play with your brand new headset. So 
might be a little bit disappointing in that aspect. If you love virtual reality and want to see me check out one of the craziest VR gaming setups in the world, you should watch this video next. It's absolutely huge, the size of this room scale. And it really does show what the future of VR gaming could look like in the metaverse.